Greetings to all fans of good movies. In this video, I will tell you about film called Coda, a story about a child of deaf parents. <coughs> Ruby Rossi, a 17-year-old girl, fishes every morning on her father's boat along with her older brother. While working, she often listens to music and sings along loudly. She also responds to all radio calls. After mooring to the shore, she sells the caught fish and fills out and signs papers. Sign over here. What are you going to take her lunch money to? Ruby was born into a deaf family. She is perfectly healthy unlike her brother Leo, who is also deaf. After saying goodbye to her family, Ruby hurries to school. On the way, she continues to listen to music on her headphones. At school, Ruby struggles academically. She often falls asleep in class due to her family responsibilities. Do you smell fish? <laughs> also, Ruby is often ridiculed by her classmates. She is not very popular among her peers. She has only one school friend named Gertie. After class, the students contemplate which elective to choose. Ruby signs up for choir singing, which surprises Gertie. I sing all the time. If you start, you know, beatboxing, we're done, yeah? After school, Ruby's parents pick her up. Loud gangsta rap plays in the car, attracting the attention of all the children in the schoolyard. Together, they are going to see a doctor, and their daughter must be their interpreter. At the hospital, Ruby has to translate intimate details about her parents' personal lives. In the evening, the family prepares for dinner. Everything around Ruby is too noisy, disrupting her homework. Her mother also comments on her posture and doesn't allow her to listen to music at the table, as it's considered impolite since the rest of the family can't hear her. The next day, Ruby attends her first choir rehearsal. There's also a boy she secretly admires. The singing teacher, Mr. Bernardo Rodriguez, introduces himself to the kids and asks each of them to sing a snippet from a song to determine their range. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Next. When it's Ruby's turn, she feels extremely shy and can't say a word. Unable to handle the pressure, she runs out of the class. Later, she walks alone by the lake and starts singing without an audience. To you. In the evening, before bed, Girl overhears a conversation between her parents. They argue about their difficult financial situation. Furthermore, the next morning, family learns about additional expenses related to new inspections in the fishing union. At school, Ruby approaches Mr. Bernardo. She tells him that she loves singing, but has never performed in front of people before, which makes her very anxious. She shares about her family, how since first grade, everyone laughed at her unusual speech because she rarely heard human speech and essentially learned to speak only in school. Then, I'll see you in class. After classes, Ruby goes home with her friend. Gertie likes Leo, and she asks how to say, I like you, in the language of the deaf-mute. At the next choir lesson, the teacher helps the girl cope with her anxiety. Also, after class, he calls her and Miles over and tells her that they will be performing as a duet in a song competition, after which he hands them the necessary text and sends them off to prepare. After school, Ruby goes to the fisherman's wharf. There, she argues with her brother because he sold their catch at a low price. Their father reconciles them, explaining that in their family, everyone sticks together and that they should only fight with the port buyers. Then the children suggest to their father that they should sell the fish themselves without intermediaries. <laughs> Ruby happily attends the choir group. Here, for the first time in a long while, she is truly happy. During a homework check, Mr. Bernardo notices that the students prepared separately, which affects their duet. He advises them to become friends to better prepare for the performance. At the end of the lesson, the teacher asks Ruby about her future plans and suggests that she apply to the vocal department at Berkeley College. However, the girl replies that she will most likely stay at home because she needs to help her family and they don't have the money for such expensive education. Mr. Bernardo mentions that the college offers scholarship grants for those who pass the entrance exam well. 
He has already started preparing Miles and also wants to help the talented girl prepare. I do not waste my time. So if I'm offering, it's because I hear something. In The Fisherman's Wharf, Leo insists on starting their own business. However, their father objects because they are considered disabled and no one will want to work with them. After the conversation, Leo goes to a bar with the other fishermen. One of the visitors accidentally spilled beer on him, but refuses to apologize since Leo is deaf and won't hear it anyway. A fight breaks out, but the fishermen are quickly separated. Gertie works in this bar. She approaches Leo and starts flirting with him. Eventually, they retire to a staff room. Miles comes to Ruby's house to rehearse. Initially, they feel awkward looking into each other's eyes. They decide to turn their backs to each other to avoid feeling embarrassed. Their singing is interrupted by moans and noise coming from the adjacent room. The parents didn't know anyone was home, and Ruby feels very awkward in this situation. Ah, I hate you! The next day at the school canteen, classmates start laughing at the girl. They found out from Miles what happened at their home. Ruby gets angry at him and is disappointed by his actions. Later, preparations for the entrance exam begin. During the lesson, Mr. Rodriguez notices Ruby's anger and tension, and he helps her turn these feelings to her advantage. Ah! Ah! Meanwhile, a meeting of fishermen takes place in the port. Ruby is late because of her class. She translates what the council head says to her father. He tries to introduce a new tax, justifying it with increased safety control for the fishermen. Father can't take it anymore and stands up, yourself, saying he's leaving the council to create his own. Leo also urges the other fishermen to join them since they can double their earnings. Later, at family dinner, they persuade mother to handle their accounting and involve other fishermen's wives in the business. The mother hesitates, thinking she won't be able to connect with the other wives. Father points to Ruby, saying she should be their voice. Family decides and launches their own business. They start getting along better with others and their business gradually improves. Although with difficulty, Ruby manages to juggle her studies with her new responsibilities. After another late arrival, Rodriguez says he will stop teaching her because she doesn't respect his time. The girl promises that it won't happen again. During a school break, Miles approaches Ruby and asks for her forgiveness. You have no idea what it's like to hear people laugh at your family. I'm going to text you every few minutes until you agree to hang out with me. One day, Ruby rushes to Rodriguez's class. But her mother stops her because local television has arrived, wanting to interview them. The girl yields to her mother's wishes. She voices her parents' words while simultaneously messaging the teacher. Ruby constantly gets distracted by her phone, trying to reschedule rehearsals which ruins the interview. In the evening, the teacher doesn't let her go home. At school, Mr. Bernardo calls Ruby too irresponsible. He says that with her attitude, she won't last even a couple of days at Berkeley. I've never done anything without my family before. That evening, Ruby admits to her family that she's preparing to apply to college. She wants to continue singing, which means she'll have to move. Her parents are against it. They need her right now, and they consider singing to be unimportant. <laughs> the next morning, Ruby doesn't go to the port. But today, there will be an inspector on the boat with them. The woman eventually learns that both fishermen are deaf, and since there's no hearing person with them, they are prohibited from going out to sea. She calls the Coast Guard. Yes, sir, sir, stand up. Meanwhile, girl is walking with Miles. They've come to the lake. As an apology, she suggests the guy to jump into the water from a high cliff. In the evening, returning home, Ruby finds out that her father's license has been revoked. She didn't go to the port and didn't inform her father about it, which put them in a difficult situation. During the court hearing, they are fined $2,500 and required to hire a speaking sailor who can respond to radio calls from the Coast Guard. At the family dinner, the father says he will sell the boat and stop fishing. Ruby convinces him otherwise. She agrees to stay home and help the family, and she can go to college later when things settle down. 
After dinner, her mother comes into Ruby's room with a dress for her future performance. Relatives opens up and talks honestly for the first time in a long while. It helps them reconcile. The day of the school concert arrives. Family sits in the auditorium as Ruby steps onto the stage. Her performance begins, and the audience applauds. Ruby's parents can't hear their daughter's voice. They can only watch the reactions of the others in the audience. Some smile, and some even start to cry. At the end of the song, the hall erupts in applause. Ruby's family realizes she sings wonderfully. After the concert, they meet Mr. Bernardo. He praises his student and asks the parents to allow her to take the entrance exam. However, Ruby doesn't translate this part to her parents. Back home, father asks Ruby to sing her song for him. Girl starts singing, and her father can't hold back his tears. In that moment, he decides to change his mind. The next morning, he wakes his daughter and tells her to get ready. The whole family gets in the car and drives to the entrance exam for support. In the hallway before the audition, Ruby learns that Miles failed the exam. Then she is called onto the stage. Standing before the admissions committee, she is extremely nervous, especially since her family wasn't allowed inside. Ruby didn't know she needed sheet music for the pianist, so they ask her to sing a cappella. Rodriguez watches from the back of the room. He approaches and offers to be her pianist. The committee agrees. Ruby starts singing, but it doesn't go well. Sorry, my mistake. At that moment, her family appears in the audience. They manage to sneak into the balcony unnoticed. The singing starts over. With her loved ones present, Ruby stops being nervous. As she sings, she starts gesturing the song's words to her family. The admissions committee notices. To the Rossi family manages to overcome financial difficulties. Their business grows, and they hire a new sailor for the team. Eventually, they receive news about a scholarship for education. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who watched until the end. On this channel, you can always find retellings of good movies.